Dr. Edward Group is here to make two big announcements. We have Super Female Vitality now available in the shopping cart today. You not only get a great product, it helps block all the garbage they put in the food and water. You support the tip of the spear in the info war. We have live reportage from going into the Bilderberg Hotel next hour with David Knight and others. And we're announcing the iodine coming up as well at 40 after. But, but Dr. Group, I've done a long intro there. We'll have you till 15 after next hour when David Knight joins us. But uh, you've heard me break down this win-win, win-win-win situation. Um, you've got a lot of points here. Estrogen dominance decreases B, zinc, MG, <coughs> DHEA, serotonin. Bill Gates, history of estrogen dominance, eugenics, estrogen mimickers, what it does in women, not just men, social engineering, pesticides, BPA, soy, GMOs, plastics, birth control, Eber Bernays, alcohol, it all starts in the gut. You've got the floor. Break down. Drum roll, please. There is a solution to this. It's diet, it's exercise, it's purified water, and then it's the nitrous oxide of race car driving, it is a super feminine vitality. Well, it all started years ago when uh, the globalists wanted to figure out ways to sterilize the population and to control the birth rates. And at that time, uh, Margaret Sanger, who actually worked with um, Bill Gates' dad, was the one that wanted to create a birth control pill. And then she worked with a scientist called Pincus. That's right. His dad was top Army intelligence under the Rockefellers and with Margaret Sanger. And it's still right. alive running ops today. Oh, it's planned. He actually runs the foundation. Good, you know, he runs so. the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Right, and then that all you know that that translates into many other things, and it, it ties to Monsanto and everything else for the whole sterility thing. But she's the one that really pushed the birth control pills, and so that was a way because they knew that. By the way. Uh, estrogen blocks the absorption of iodine. They know that there's a link between estrogen and iodine. So what now, uh, because of the birth control pills and the propaganda and the feminization of females that was done by Edward Bernays, the king of propaganda, who not only convinced everybody that fluoride was safe, He's, he was the one that was also hired to uh, create the feminization because they knew that. And to get women to smoke cigarettes. And cigarettes was the big campaign, too, that he convinced the whole public. And then he was ultimately, you know, hired on as the mastermind of manipulation of the population. But they knew that they could they were only getting 50 percent of the tax money also by males uh, working. So his job was to get females out of the house and get them into the workplace so that the government could collect 100 percent of the taxes from everybody. And have the state raise the kids. And one of the re yeah, and the state raised the kids. By the way, he wrote three books bragging about this. Right. Anybody out there right. can read by him saying this. Yes. And but one of the key uh, points I wanted to mention he, how that all ties together in the estrogen conspiracy and the war on women is the fact that uh, part of the way to get women out of the household was to create canned food and box foods and processed foods and the microwave, which came into existence too. So if women didn't have to cook anymore, they could go to work and, and turn. And that was the washing. They didn't just give us washing machines and all this. They wanted to change the culture. They wanted to end humans being primitive, being self sufficient. Yeah, that's right, and uh, and also it's the technocracy. And I'm not bashing the conveniences. It's just that they gave us these tools of the gods, the fire of Prometheus, to 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 end us. And therefore, we have the creation of the estrogen compounds and the estrogen mimickers, starting with BPA and all the the BPA that's, that's sprayed in the cans because canned foods. Everybody wanted to have the easy dinner at night and the microwave foods where the male used to bring the worms to the nest. The female ran the nest, not because she was weak, she was more important. Now we don't bring worms. The, the, the HEB does, the Safeway does, and it's bisphenol A worms to our babies. That's right. I mean, and so what you have is you have estrogen dominance in males and you have estrogen dominance in females. And it's it's coming from every single direction. And that's why females are suffering from extra weight gain, low thyroid because they can't absorb iodine. Breast cysts. Breasts. Any type of glandular problem, uh, any type of cysts in any gland directly related to an iodine deficiency. We're going to skip this network break. It's too important. Keep going. Women and men, for that for that matter, have their hormones completely whacked out, especially when you add soy and personal care products, which most people don't talk about with women. They slather all these parabens and all these... By the way, last week they came the out in AP, guys reprinted, and admitted what you've been saying forever, that guess what? Those plastics and the stuff in the hair care products, guess what? It destroys your fertility. Oopsie.
Yeah, oopsie, uh, estrogen just modifies the growth of cells. When you put, when you have cancer cells in a Petri dish and you put a drop at like a trillionth of what you would get in a couple cans or, or, or heating something in the microwave, you see those cancer cells immediately just start to replicate like at a very fast speed. So it's a cancer adjuvant. It's a cancer adjuvant and that's why we have so much breast cancer and everything else. But iodine is there to protect people and women from that but so it's racist to, women need to be aware. iodine is racist well if you look at it from the globalist point well, no, of view, i mean anything free or good is called <laughs> racist so it's bad right because they know that if they mess up the hormones in everybody it can cause a, a just a world of other problems within the system so what you have to look at is is women avoiding or going with all natural personal care products and then another big problem that no one's talking about is the atrazine and the pesticides that are being sprayed everywhere because the Roundup, atrazine is in the water supply, every single, it tested in every water supply pretty much in the country. And that is, those are also estrogen mimickers and it's hard to avoid because what they what what else they have inside those pesticides which they don't even have to list on the label they have other chemicals in there as well that help them bind and stick to the foods and it goes down into the soil so the plant actually sucks it up inside so bioaccumulates yeah bioaccumulates so what re it, it can really affect the fetus in the womb because if the mother is taking in all these estrogen mimickers it can create the brain of a female, but the genitalia of a male, or it can have the genitalia of a male and the brain of a female. Because and they admitted that in the 60s. So Dr. Michael Kaufman said that in Endgame 2.0. He was reading the documents on air, how the sexual revolution was so we wouldn't stay together and take care of kids so the state could raise them. But next phase was to chemicalize to where males and females were indistinguishable. They would make the age of puberty earlier, just like in Brave New World, which Huxley admitted was a fictional account of what they really planned to do, and he said that in Brave New World Revisited. Right. I mean, just the atrazine levels in lakes and ponds and the pesticide levels in there are actually having, and they've done studies on frogs, they actually have frogs that are, have male genitalia, but turn over for other males because their brain... And when I cover this, them. Huffington Post says that we're anti-gay. You, know, you know, the frogs are dying... The, the animals are dying. They're doing this on purpose. We, we should just accept this and, 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 and go for it. That's the gender bending chemicals. And it's another reason why they planted so much soy. They knew that soy was going to be extremely toxic. It takes a lot. Well, you, you factor in Henry the, Ford, the, Monsanto, the Nazi, the eugenicist was obsessed with that. Right. And then Monsanto genetically modifying all the soy. Well, not only is it genetically modified, but it's also Roundup resistant. And then Roundup in itself is an, edge, an endocrine disrupting chemical or an estrogen mimicker. So that causes a, a problem with the hormones and it's soaked up inside the source. So not only are you getting the phytoestrogens in soy, but you're also getting the endocrine disrupting chemicals and the estrogen disrupting. And then the printer ink has it in it, everything. And I was reading, talking to chemists, and your dad was a top chemist. They didn't even need to go with this recipe, but they got all the big printer companies to go with it. And, and it's on the money too. They're just sterilizing us at every level. Right. They're it, disrupting our hormones so we can't think properly. We can't function properly. It creates separation in the, in the homes. Uh, the male doesn't feel confident anymore because he's estrogen. Him, the male starts getting a belly around, around himself. He starts growing man boobs. His butt starts to get a little bit bigger because one of the things with estrogen dominance in women is it lowers their libido. Number two, it, it, it increases the fat around their butt and it increases the fat around their breast tissue too, but also around the stomach. So you know, and it lowers their thyroid, and the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, they have problems with cysts, they have premenstrual syndrome, their uh, menstrual cycles are irregular, they're not able to get rid of their toxins on a regular basis. So all that... CNN will just say you're against women for warning them. Well, I mean, that's... I mean, if you... Course, that's with CNN. You just, they need to just die for the earth. Isn't it better? They shouldn't take iodine. They shouldn't learn about this. They shouldn't take it when they're pregnant, even though there's a bunch of admitted disorders from iodine deficiency. 
uh, in the fetus, correct? Right, and that's why there's also such a big uh, push for flu shots on pregnant women right now from all the, the OB-GYNs, which I personally... And by the way, until understand. five years ago, all medical people were told, nurses, you name it, never give a pregnant woman a vaccine. They knew it caused deformities. They knew it caused disorders, autoimmune and spontaneous miscarriages. Now they say pregnant women need extra. They do, uh, which is just causing more problems with the kids because whenever you put any type of chemical like that into the body, it does cross the placenta now, some of these things, and it does affect the kid. I mean, and not only you could think that you're not exposing yourself to estrogen, but there's so many women on birth control pills that 85% of the estrogen gets peed out by the by the woman, and that goes into our water system. So if you're drinking tap water... And now in Austin, water. they're going to give us toilet to tap that doesn't even remove it. So now, if you drink Austin water or other cities that have it, it is a death sentence. All of the Prozac, all the Ritalin, everything just annihilating you. Right, and it's like homeopathic. You don't need it in large doses to make a difference in the body. I mean, all a homeopathic is is just water with an energy signature in it. So basically, but fluoride, but fluoride, you know, is the and I've had medical doctors on like Blaylock is the total turbo adjuvant to turbo. Once you have fluoride, the other drugs are in there. It turbocharges them. Yeah, that's why they put fluoride. Makes in. them electrical. Fluoride's in anti-malarials, anti-inflammatories, anti-arthritis, a bunch of the antibiotics. It's in antidepressants. And it's not just fluoride. Hydrofluorosilicic acid has been electrolyzed. And aluminum. They add aluminum in there to take it up into the brain tissue and to, to calcify the pineal gland and to calcify, you know, because the pineal gland. And then they write books, <laughs> how they're doing it, like eco-science, but still we're conspiracy theorists. Right. Right, right. I mean, it's all the thing is, everything's in plain day. I mean, they know how important the pineal gland is. That's why the Pope has a, a pine cone looking shape on his cone over there. And there's pine cones. If you look at everywhere around the Vatican, they tell you straight up. This is a representation of the pineal gland. If you look at the eye of Horus in the Egyptian sculptures, I mean, they knew how important the pineal gland was too. And I know we're getting off subject. But no, the seat of the soul. And is the seat of the soul. And it's everywhere. So they And you it cut it out. Day. Those higher level brain waves just don't happen. Well, the pineal gland is made, if you cut it open, it's made of rods and cones, exactly like what's in your eye. That's why they call it the third eye. So why, is you, why are you going to have something in the middle of your brain that's made of the exact same thing your eye is made of? Rods and cones. The only reason you have rods and cones is to see things, visual. Rods and cones pick up color and pick up light. That's right. So if you can see things, obviously, and the Egyptians knew about it, of course, it's picking up all what they now know, all the different particles that are coming through out of space and the particles coming up out of the earth, magnetic fields, the same way they've proven fish and birds can navigate. It's now been proven by Scientific American. Uh, just the last year, they've gone, no, it's true. Humans have uh, these cells in the pineal, the same ones fish and, 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 and other animals have to feel magnetic lines. And some people have it stronger than others. That's why they know that the endocrine disrupting chemicals, the estrogen mimickers, the phthalates, the pesticides, all of the stuff that they're spraying and putting in the air and the food and the water disrupts the glandular system of the body. You know, the glandular system. They're the attacking our most important eyeball. The pineal gland, the adrenal glands, you know, all of the glands in the system, they know that the glands are what runs the body. You destroy the glands, you destroy the consciousness, you dumb people down, you make them non-aggressive, you make them non-motivated, you alter their hormone levels, and then they become nothing more than an easily manipulated, uh, right. easily controlled, I agree. Every time we get here, population. start telling us what super female vitality does, how it's different than super male. Well, you know, super female vitality was developed because we had such good success with super male vitality. And it's all about taking action. You know, here's the problem. Let's come up with a solution. Yes, why we came up with super male. Now we've had so many requests by women saying, hey, what can I do? You know, I want to I don't want to go through PMS symptoms and all that stuff. I mean, half the time I'm going through mood swings, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my libido is low. Now my husband is all over me. You know, when are you going to come out with something for women? So what we did is I tweaked the formula a little bit, and it, the, the super female vitality is designed to help naturally uh, increase the body's own production of testosterone and to help the woman balance out some of these 
hormones that her body is naturally trying to fight because if she's taking in, if she's lathering herself with all this lotion, which is uh, uh, decreasing her estrogen or, or mimicking es estrogen, she needs something to help balance that out. So that's why super female vitality was developed so it gives the body a chance. It's available at InfoWarsLife.com. We'll be right back. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.